All right, let's do this one last time. My name is Drew Dodger, and for the last couple months, I've been doing a podcast with my good buddy, Jacob Heron. While we love film in general, with us being artists and all, we have a fascination with animation, and we decided to start an audio podcast after we both geeked out over the animated Transformers movie. We're not perfect, we've gotten names wrong, and we don't always agree on movies. But at the end of the day, we try to bring an informative and entertaining show to you all, and we'd like to welcome you to The Cell Cast. Hello and welcome to another episode of The Cell Cast. Joining me this morning is a man who so determines to catch that thief, he drives his Japanese police car halfway to Eastern Europe. Jacob! Why, thank you, and I would like to introduce our co-host, a man who just had to go and rescue the princess. Welcome, Drew. Well, excuse me, <laughs> princess! <laughs> There's a quote most people won't get, <laughs> unless you're a nerd. Yeah. So, uh, how are you doing this morning? I'm doing very well, actually. I've caught up on my sleep, finally. It took you long enough. Yeah, it took me long enough. Well, for those of you who don't know, uh, he stayed up way too late in coming back from the other side of Fort Worth. Yes. That's the problem. <laughs> yeah, that's that was a big problem of it. If you could sleep in the car, you'd be fine. Yeah, but, but you're what, like me, and you can't. <laughs> Well, and also, I'm trying to keep the driver awake. <laughs> ah, yes. Yeah. So, well, went to a, a very good, uh, went to a very good play called The Passion, uh, which basically, anybody who wants to know, it's basically the... It's uh, The Promise. Promise. Thank you. Passion is a different thing. Yes, exactly. That's in uh, Branson. Okay. Gotcha. 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 Yeah. Basically, the life, de- life, ministry, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Great performance. Sadly, sadly that we learned that the the guy who played the devil last year, who was phenomenal, passed away. That is sad. Yeah, but the guy, the uh, the man who filled his shoes, did a very good job. And it's really odd that that's the only time I think you can literally say I really liked the devil and it not <laughs> yes. be satanic. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes, <laughs> yeah. That was that was a that was a very interesting trip. Um, and you know many other things I'll probably talk about later. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, I finally caught up in my sleep. Um, uh, I was supposed to go to a Bible study on, well, the day of the recording on Tuesday and I was like, nope, I'm sleeping until 730 and I probably woke up for like a minute. I saw a light and I was like, nope, up in bed. <laughs> and I woke up like three minutes before my alarm went off and I was like, okay, thank you, Lord. I can think straight. <laughs> I'm glad you can think straight because I don't care how much sleep I've gotten. That's before eight o'clock, I am not thinking straight at all. <laughs> but that's just how things are. Night owls. And your point? <laughs> hey, I'm a morning person, okay? And you're weird. <laughs> no, I think night owls are weird. What I would love to know is why you, a morning person, don't have to be in early, but yet me, the night owl, is forced to be a, <laughs> be somewhere at 6.30. But hey, it is what it, it is. It is. It is what it is. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, how are you doing, Drew? I'm, I'm doing good. Uh, kind of a long day, but nothing too serious. More, yeah. Mostly it was just a steady one thing after another, but nothing you know, like mind-boggling. I got you. I'm definitely ready for one job to be done. Yeah. Because I'm tired of seeing it crop back up again. Yeah. But that's just how things happen. Yeah. Well, you did have something come up Saturday, which... We, we kind of alluded to that you were very much not owl. And then had to be at, work, to be at work. I had to be at work even earlier than normal. <laughs> what what time was that? Five in the morning. I had to be not awake. There at five. I woke up at four. Which is an hour that should not exist unless you have stayed up too late. Well, to quote Ursula. You can go you to sleep at four o'clock. Soul. You shouldn't have to... You, sh- you should be able to go... Going to sleep at 4 o'clock is fine. Waking up at 4 o'clock is devil. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so to quote uh, a famous witch, you poor fortune soul. Anyway. <laughs> you stupid morning person, you. Anyway. Hey, 
where are we going? <laughs> hey, I can't, most of them, I cannot stay up past 12. I'm just like, uh, I need to go to sleep. I'm tired. Bam. <laughs> yes, but the thing is, even if you were to go to sleep at 12, yeah. you could go wake up at 5 and go, okay, I'm up, I'm ready, here we go. It's got all the energy. Let's go on the thing. It's like, and I get up. I could go to sleep at 9 p.m. Way earlier than I would normally go to sleep. Right. Hang on. Yeah. Go to bed at 9 p.m. Go away, Windows Update. Okay. I could go to sleep at 9 p.m. Yeah. Wake up at 9 a.m. Have 12 hours of sleep and still look like crap in the morning. <laughs> Because I just went to, that's the thing. I wake up. I until I've had some time to yeah adjust. Mm-hmm. I am not friendly. Can I, I have you. to say that because I don't drink coffee. I got you. Well, I do know one other person I know that is the the kind of person that will roll in at where he's got to be at nine o'clock in the morning, mm-hmm. and everyone's like, "Okay, don't talk to him. He's a big bear." You don't want to mess with him, and I'm referring to one of our, In our the, yeah, yeah, one of our pastors at the church we both attend. It's like poor Tom, <laughs> not a morning person. Anyway, yeah. Anyways, what have you watched uh, when you've had time? That's the thing. I haven't had time to watch anything. I, I did. I did watch. It was actually more of a review over a movie in which we will never, ever, 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 ever review here. Oh, yeah. Ever. That bad? Yeah. Is it that bad enough that we want to talk about it when the recording's not going? No. Or no, do you no, want no. to give people ample warning of what we will never, ever, 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 ever do? Exactly. Felix the Cat. <laughs> Wait. The one from the 80s? 70s. Uh, the, it was like, the, yeah. the weird one? The what? The really creepy one? Yeah. The one that was, you know, the first rated X, you know, Cartoon, or as most people now know it is N17. Okay. Okay, so I, I, a, a YouTuber I love to death, uh, Saber Spark. Be like, he has done all kinds of very weird yeah. reviews. Very, very weird reviews. He went from, it's like, okay, these are odd movies I'm going to review, to really bad movies, to furry movies. Well, considering his background, yeah, that wasn't a far <laughs> step. Yeah, and then he did one that was over like one of the very early like adult themed anim- animated movies, and then he did Billy's the Cat. I was like, oh my gosh! And uh, I was like, you know what? But like, I want to. I-, I was I was almost daring myself to be like, you know, I could download, I could you know rent, I could rent it on like iTunes or something like that. And I'm like, I saw like one like one scene, and it's like. Uh uh-uh. uh, <laughs> I know myself too well. Not happening. <laughs> okay. So yes, be like yes. There again, I will purpose this. We are never, ever, 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 ever going to review Felix the Cat. We might mention it. It's kind of like another. So youth. not even when we do bad movies, which we've been threatening to do for a while. Yeah, but this will be like yeah, we're, we're not we're not going to cross over that bridge. <laughs> okay. Because so there you go, folks. There is a line that there, we will not cross. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no. But be like his review was very good. It gave me a very good insight to what the movie is about. Well, yeah, but it had to be edited in such a way oh, you could still yeah. monetize the video. Oh yeah. <laughs> well, the the funny thing was the the previous video he had he had done was very highly edited. This would have too. to be. Yeah. Well, he had YouTube's came, guidelines are strict. Oh yeah, well apparently he he had uploaded another video. It's like, hey, if you want my full review with no edits whatsoever, go to this site, go to this site, and then go to this adult site to watch it. Okay. Yeah, I'm not going to mention adult site's name because we're not going to promote things like that up here. Anyway. Yeah. Anyways, rent over. <laughs> Before we I'm, get too deep into talking about adult things, yeah, on a family friendly show. So, yes. So yeah, it, so just purpose if your child ever says be like, hey, be like, I heard about this movie. It's called Felix the Cat. Be like, can we watch it? Say which no. Which one? <laughs> which Felix the Cat? Because if it's that seventies one, no. Ooh. Anyway, yeah. Anyways, so yeah, definitely say no. Anyways, 
so yeah, that's basically what I've had time to watch. Was basically sta- sta- Sabers, Mark. Hmm. What have you been watch? And we were talking about this earlier. <laughs> yeah. So our only bit of news that's going to be coming up yes. is what inspired me. Yes. <laughs> to fall down this hole. <laughs> This crescent moon-shaped hole. Follow the moonlight all the way down? <laughs> well, anyway. Yeah. <laughs> because of that announcement, I ended up thinking, you know, I've not watched the new series of this. Because there's... Yeah. Okay. Let me back up. Okay. My introduction to anime mm-hmm. was 1990s, early 2000s, Toonami. Yeah, like most people's was. What anime do you know was on at that time? Oh, let me let me count the ways. Dragon Ball Z, Sailor Moon. Uh, uh, you already s- said it. Yeah. I, the first anime. Yeah. The first by an hour and a half. <laughs> anime I ever watched. Oh. Was the deke dub of Sailor Moon. Hmm. And I didn't know what it was. That was just Cartoon Network. I'm yeah. watching stuff. And, you know, I kind of got into it as a yeah. kid. Yeah. Because I was at that age where you begin to notice things. So yeah. That's all I'm going to say. Yeah, girls be interesting. <laughs> yeah, girls are interesting. So I watched it and had, at that back then, and I yeah. enjoyed it. Yeah. And I hadn't watched it in 20 years, which the fact that I can say 20 years is since I first got Cartoon Network makes me feel old. <laughs> <laughs> Understand. Completely understand that. So, I saw this post that you put in Facebook. Yeah. About, well, we'll get to that when we get to the news. Mm Mm-hmm. I thought, there's another show of this that came out recently I never Mm -hmm. watched. I've got nothing else to do after I'd been at work for eight hours on a Saturday. He's finally awake. I'm finally awake, yes. And I gotta watch something while I eat, so I'll watch an episode. Yeah. Nine episodes later, it's like... (laughs) I have to go to bed. I've stayed. I've watched too much of this. So I went to bed. And then I watched the movie we're reviewing tonight on Sunday. And of course, you know, Sunday's a busy day Mm -hmm. for church. Yeah. And then Monday I get home. I got to watch something while I eat dinner. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I've only got four episodes left of season one. (laughs) I might as well finish. So you, so I did. So you basically got hooked on those moonbeams. Um, I don't have anywhere to go with this. <laughs> it's my problem. I gotcha. Because I'm trying to come up with "Fly Me to the Moon," which would bring us to Evangelion, which I didn't watch, but I'm staring at the word on your board over here, but I don't understand. Okay, so but so, anyway, so to let to let our audience know, uh, back behind him is this dry erase board that was not here any of the other times we've recorded. Yeah, it's got a bunch of notes, and at the very bottom it says Evangelion <laughs> Church, and I'm thinking that has got to mean something besides what's coming across my mind because <laughs> I know Evangelion is a word outside of anime. <laughs> okay, so. One of our listeners, Jim, my brother, came over the other night, and so we brainstormed quite a bit, working on projects, and uh, talked about possible one or two things coming into the pipeline. And uh, we were talking theology. <laughs> and always a touchy subject. Uh, <laughs> it's a fun subject to talk about. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so we start, I'll be like, be like, we started talking about a, cer- a certain viewpoint within. The Evangelion... E, the, I, a, so, yes. Evangelical? Evangelical, evangelical church. church. <laughs> evangelical church. And, uh... It's like... Uh, trying not to bust right now. Uh, and so, it's like, yeah, the Evangelion church, right? It's like, no, I said that wrong. And Jim was like, I've got to write this down. <laughs> so he wrote it on the board. Okay. So ex- that's, that's the reason. That explains that. It's just... The you, oddest sentence I've seen in many a year. Yeah, so you you can blame Jim for that. All right. <laughs> and oh, by the way, he was sitting in your seat most of the time. That surprised me. <laughs> anyway, back to my points. <laughs> uh, yes, I did end up watching 17 episodes. Wow. Because I got all through four, the 14 episodes of season one, and I watched three episodes of season two. 
Season two is different. Mm-hmm. There are a total of three seasons. And to kind of segue us into the news, mm-hmm. there is a movie coming out next year, into next year. Into next year, yeah. Called Sailor Moon Eternal, mm-hmm. which is the first part of a two-part movie that is going to make up what would essentially be, what it would have been Sailor Moon Crystal 4, season 4. Okay. It's just going to do that next storyline. Oh, okay. So In movie form. In movie form. Huh. Well, because admittedly, if you can go through 14 episodes and go through the first story, that's pretty fast. Yeah. Because that's only, I don't know how many hours. But you could easily cut some, some even what I watched, could it, some of that could have been cut back. Right. And still get the main idea. So that's not too far out of the, out of the way where you're making two two movies to make up what would be season four. Right. And just to kind of track, backtrack where, you know, we're talking about the, the show you watched. Mm-hmm. Uh, where can our audience find that? It is they... on... Okay, so if you've got Hulu, you can watch all three seasons of Sailor Moon Crystal. But if you want to watch the original with its new English dub, that's also on Hulu. Okay. Or, if for some reason you don't have Hulu, you can watch it on Amazon, but you have to buy the seasons. Mm. And that price was $30, which is why I was looking elsewhere for the to, to try it elsewhere, because I didn't want to pay any extra any more money than I needed to. Yeah, that's understandable. But, yeah. Hmm. So, uh, do you have any other news items? God, not that I know of. Not that I know of. I know that uh, a series that I've only watched maybe like one episode of is currently on hiatus, which is Rapunzel's Tangled Adventures. They just got into season three and they went on a hiatus. Well, that's probably because Disney Plus is coming. That's a possibility. And plus, I think they're only like episode four, like six, which is really weird. Then you take a really long hiatus. Well... It's not as weird as some things I've seen. It depends on how long they're going for. Yeah. If it's a 24 episode season, yeah, that's kind of weird. But at the same time, we are, at the time of this recording, about four weeks away from Thanksgiving. Yeah. This is a busy time of year. It could just be they decided, well, for the second block, we'll hold off and maybe come back in January. Yeah. On Disney+. Plus. That's true. Give enough people time to watch all everything on Disney Plus since they made made it hard to watch otherwise. Yeah, legally. And so by the time this this podcast will launch, the second, the second. Okay, so November second, November second. So when this episode launches on episode on November second, that means you will have until the twelfth for Disney Plus. Yeah, almost ten days. Almost ten days. And then you can watch through everything. Yeah. Until binge to you your catch up to, until you catch up to the hiatus and you don't have to wait. Yeah. In the meantime, I would suggest jumping over to Gravity Falls. Yeah. <sighs> Which, yeah, mm. you haven't watched any more of that, have you? I haven't had a chance to. I don't know. I'm just. It's one of those things I'm sitting there going, I want to talk about this with somebody, and the <laughs> certain somebody I want to talk with is is being slow about watching it. Says the guy who's not watching Evangelion when he should be. This, this, this. <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> anyway, uh, let's move into our spoiler-free thoughts on our movie, Lupin the Third, The Castle of Cagliostro. Lupin the Third! You just had to get that in one last time. I did. You? I did. <laughs> hey, anytime I hear Lupin the Third, that comes to mind. Okay. So, yeah. So, what are your thoughts? All right. Spoiler-free thoughts on Lupin the Third, Castle of Castia- Cagliostro. Cagliostro. Thank you. It's a... Heck of a ride. Mm-hmm. It's a heck of a ride. It's a enjoyable film. It's very much the the suave thief mm-hmm. who comes in and does all these incredibly funny things. And think James Bond, but a thief. <laughs> Just suave, debonair, basically can get away with anything. Yeah. You saw how smooth he is. And yeah, it's 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 a lot of fun. Uh, the version in which I watched, which I borrowed from Drew, mm-hmm. uh, which there, thank you again for that. Yes. Um, there are different, um, English versions of this. There are a total of three English dubs. Yeah. Three English. Yes. There is the original streamlined version where 
uh, Lupin's name is replaced with Wolf, mm-hmm. which I'll get into when we get into the review itself. Arr. And then there's the regular Media Blasters dub from 2000, which mm-hmm. is got all the curse words in it. And then there's a family-friendly cut of that same dub mm-hmm. with all the curse words taken out. Yeah. So there is... You a... still see all the blood. Oh, yeah. That one scene. Oh, yeah. Because yeah. the dub doesn't affect the video. Yeah. So, yeah. And I believe the 2000 Media Blasters dub is the one that's on Netflix. Oh, okay. Because I did find out it's on Netflix. I didn't know that. So if you're interested in watching on Netflix, it's there on Netflix. Uh, yeah, it's enjoyable. Just be like, if you want to bind the DVD. Uh, yeah, just be mindful. If you start playing it, it's going to play in its natural language. It's Japanese. Yeah. So, it yeah. Is, it defaults to that for the sole reason that uh, Discotech Media, the people who currently own the license, mm-hmm. that's who they were selling it to, and they were including the English dubs as essentially bonus features. Okay. Bonus features. Okay. <laughs> okay. There it is. Okay. I'm just going to make that noise even silent. <laughs> okay. So, go ahead. Or should I just go ahead and do mine? Yeah, go do yours. So, my thoughts on it are, it is a very fun movie. Mm-hmm. Uh, I honestly uh, know very little about The Loop in the Third from a viewing standpoint. I've not watched a whole lot of it. Yeah. But it's a fun movie, and by the end of it, it's just, it's one of those that you watch and you just have a smile on your face the whole time. Oh, absolutely. Because even when things get dark, mm-hmm. there's still a lot of fun to be had in this movie. Oh, good night, yes. Good so, night, yes. yes, definitely I would suggest go watching it. If uh, you do end up getting the Blu-ray that's the and you watch the family-friendly version, mm-hmm. that is definitely family-friendly. Yes. Keep in mind, if you watch the regular version, there is... I wouldn't say it's bad cussing. Yeah, it's, 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 it's frequent throughout it the It is very the frequent. Verb. And it's really hard to know how much of that is... Most of it's going to be translation choice, I think. Possibly. But it's it doesn't really take away... whether you, we, No matter which version of that you watch, it doesn't take away from the story. So, Right. Yep, yeah, that's how I feel. So uh, I guess we should move into the full review then. Yeah, I think we should. All right. Lupin the Third is based on a book by a manga author mm-hmm. who based his character... On an even older book, mm-hmm. or series of books, yes, about the character Arsène Lupin. Mm-hmm. The third. No. The original Arsène Lupin. Oh. From the 1800s. Oh, yeah, that's right. Written by Maurice LeBlanc, mm-hmm. who, uh, because, who was writing for a magazine, mm-hmm. and because of the popularity of Sherlock Holmes... This magazine wanted to, and it, the magazine was was uh, writing stuff similar to what was in the books, in the magazines that Sherlock Holmes was written in, but in French. Oh. Uh, wanted something that would go toe to toe with mm-hmm. this other magazine, right? So they hired Maurice to to write it, and it, but instead of making just you know another standard detective, yeah. He decided to go the other direction and make a gentleman thief. Hmm. In his ninth book, Maurice LeBlanc wrote uh, essentially where Sherlock Holmes met Arsène Lupin. Hmm. The Sir Arthur Conan Doyle was not happy about this. I'm not surprised. <laughs> and pretty much at the time, they copyright was still kind of in its infancy. Yeah. So there wasn't much that could be done other than an agreement that uh, when in future installments, if that character were to show up, he couldn't be called Sherlock Holmes. So Maurice Lamarck, LeBlanc, sorry, I said his name, Maurice LeBlanc renamed the character Sherlock Holmes, and his uh, assistant Doctor Wilson so, as things to go to go up against, you know. If any time they he wanted to poke fun at Sherlock Holmes, that's yeah. what he would do. Well, over time, you know, the books get translated to other languages, mm-hmm. and the works of uh, the the books based on Arsène Lupin made it to Japan, huh. where 
a manga author who was who just gotten hired. I can't remember for who, but getting ready to write write a manga for or write and draw a manga for this book. Decided what would happen if uh, Arsene Lupin was around nowadays. Well, of course he's not going to be around nowadays. Maybe his grandson. Yeah. So that's why. And so he created Arsene Lupin the third. Here's the thing. Mm-hmm. At the time that he created Arsene Lupin the third, he didn't ask. Yeah. Any of <laughs> the people who had control over Arsene Lupin over in France, if he could do such a thing. Yeah, and also... Uh, and Japan did not honor trade copyrights yeah. at the time. <laughs> so by the time that uh, they were the estate of Maurice LeBlanc was able to actually raise a stink, the name had... The, the usage had already moved into kind of a common use, so they had no leg to stand on. Yeah, pretty much. With the only thing they could actually pull was that in international releases, the character had to be, his character's last name had to be pronounced a little bit differently. Yeah. So that's why, not in this dub, but in some others, you hear, you'll hear him called Arsene Lupin the third. Okay. This dub, though, was made in 2000 after Arsene Lupin had entered public domain in France and nobody cared anymore. So there was no more Lupin. money to be made. So that's why in this dub he, he is called Lupin or Lupin. Lupin. What, how do you say it? Lupin. 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 Lupin in this one. But if you actually go back and watch the other dub that's on here, the Streamline dub, yeah. that was made during the controversy. Ah. So because they didn't know which way it was going to go, they just went and renamed the character Wolf. Lupin. Because of Lupin. Because Lupin means wolf in, what, Latin, I think? Yeah. Okay. So what were you about to say? Well, I was about to say, ever since this is your month. Yes. This is your month. This is the Hayao Miyazaki. This is uh, Miyazaki and Ghibli month. Yes. Which I was so, going to bring him up here in just a minute. Yeah. Okay. So I was I was wanting to, you know, get our audience equated to why are we watching Lupin the Third? Other <laughs> than I've been trying to get it in since... Yes. Uh, <laughs> Since that other anime movie from the beginning of the of the year mm-hmm. got fell off, so of course the way things work in Japan, once a manga is popular enough, it gets turned into an anime. Yeah. At one point during this anime show's production, they hired a new writer and director to handle some episodes by the name of Hayao Miyazaki. Mm-hmm. He did a couple episodes of part one. He did two episodes specifically of part two. And he helped with the first Lupin the, Th- Lupin the Third movie, mm-hmm. which I don't remember the name of. And he was pretty much given as much free reign as could be given on this movie. This is the second Lupin the Third movie, but it is also Hayao Miyazaki's directorial debut. Mm-hmm. And he wrote the screenplay oh, Okay, for this. So yeah, that's why in Miyazaki Month we are doing this movie, despite the fact it's not a Studio Ghibli movie. Yeah. But... I think, I think, in fact, it's uh, Tokyo Movie Shinisha, most com- more commonly known as TMS okay. over here. But, uh, yeah, that is uh, why we are doing this movie. So now that I've also c- covered the director and the writer... Oh, I did forget to mention that the original manga artist for Lupin the Third went by the name Monkey Punch. I saw that! <laughs> I was like, okay! That is his... Uh, pin name. Pin name. Nom de Plume. That was the word I was thinking of. Nom de Plume. I looked up his actual name, and he did die, I think, within the last year, I believe. Okay. But I didn't actually write it in my notes. So, let's face it, he liked, liked to be known as Monkey Punch, so we'll stick with Monkey Punch. Okay. Uh, it was also... The screenplay was also written by uh, Haruya Yamazaki. Mm-hmm. The 2000 manga entertainment English dub that we are actually reviewing Mm -hmm. was written by Mary Claypool, who has also written screenplays for Code Geass and the Ghosts in the Shell TV series. Ah, good choice. Uh, The cast. Arsene Lupin III was Mm -hmm. played by David Hayter, who is most commonly known as the original voice of... Of Solid Snake and Metal Gear Solid. Ah, okay. 
He also played Captain America in the an- Spider-Man the Animated Series from the uh, early 90s. Oh, okay. Ah, okay. Gotcha. Lady Clarice de Cagliostro was played by Bridget Hoffman. Mm-hmm. She played Patamon and Jerry Catow in uh, Digimon Season 3. Oh. I, w- I would like to point out that when you do go and look at this... Yeah. None of these names I'm using are the names that are in the credits because nearly everybody went by pen names mm-hmm. at the time. Now, if you go and watch the DVD, the Blu-ray now, this is actually the names they're using. Yeah. But in the original ones, if you find those, they don't, and you go to Wikipedia and start looking this up, they don't use their real names. They use their pen names. Yeah, because I think it was the time they were, it was a non, they didn't non-union. Know, yeah, well, yeah, it was all non-union. They were trying to keep their union jobs. Yeah. Uh so yeah, uh, Count Lazare de Cagliostro was played by Kirk Thornton, who played Gabumon in Digimon. Ah, got a lot of Mons here. Yes. Uh, Chief Inspector Koichi Zenigata was played by Duggery Grant. He didn't do much voice work, mm-hmm. but he is the ADR director for Code Geass and Ghost in the Shell Standalone Complex. Okay. TV series. Daisuke Jigen was played by John Snyder. And in the show Trigun, he played Cliff Shezar. I'm probably saying that wrong. But if you remember in Trigun, the second episode, the one with the uh, guy that's hoarding all the water. Oh, yeah. It's the guy hoarding all the water. Oh, okay. Gotcha. That was the main thing I saw on his, because I'd seen Trigun recently, Mm -hmm. and that's in my mind. Uh, Fujiko Mine was played by Dorothy Melendez, who played Meryl Strife in Trigun. Okay. I'm still not sure how to say this guy's name, but Jado. Jadot, the guy, the guy with the green hair that was the head ni- ninja, essentially. Oh, okay. With the weird hair. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was played by uh, Milton James. Do you remember the show The Big O? Yes. Do you remember the Alfred-like character? Yes. That character's name was Norman Berg, who was played by Milton James. Oh, okay. Unfortunately, you can't find that dub anymore, because for whatever reason... Uh, Sentai Entertainment has the rights to the show now, Mm -hmm. and they didn't put the English dub on there. At least not on High Dive, which is where you can stream it. Oh, okay. Interesting. Which you can also get on Verve. But anyway. Yeah. Last but not least, Goemon Ishikawa... Sorry, let me start over. (laughs) Goemon Ishikawa the 13th was played by Michael Gregory in an uncredited role. For some reason, his role was uncredited in the manga dub. Really? And the main thing he's known at, he, he, the main thing I saw in there on his was he played Brilliance, Dynamites, Neon, and Trigun. Okay. You know, that's the guy with, near, I think, near the end of episode seven that's mm-hmm. got all the neon lights on his armor. Oh, okay. That yeah. tried to take over the giant sand train. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That guy. Hmm. So that was, that's the main things I saw. This is probably one of the last ones for our next couple of days where you're not going to rec- you, you'll recognize very few of the cast. Yeah. Because from this point on, we get into many of the Disney produced dubs mm-hmm. of the Miyazaki show. So they tended to hire more well-known names. That makes sense. So, uh, do you have anything to add? Because I know you did not have as much time as you normally do to do research. I got you. Due to the lack of sleep and just no time whatsoever. Yes. We'll blame your brother. He took up your time yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We, we, yeah. It's, it's all your fault, fault Jim. Jim. <laughs> no, we're kidding. <laughs> Please don't turn us off. <laughs> Anyways. So the movie was released on December 15th, 1979. Mm-hmm. Uh, it is going to be where, you know, when it was released in America, though. So that Well, been... that's because it was a straight to video release here in oh, America. Okay. I gotcha. So... Apparently, when it was released here in America, which would have been the 2000? Well, this is the 2000 dub. There's another, yeah. The other dub on there is from, the, from like 1991, 92. Okay. So, the information I currently have in front of me does not indicate when... Because these have the, Amer- the American numbers. Yes. So, for how much it had a budget? It had a pretty nice budget. 5 million yen. Wish I knew what that was in U.S. dollars. Same here. <laughs> but, yeah, that's pretty significant for it. Yeah, I think it, that is significant for a, for a movie. Yeah, but also it was like a... It, according to it is, what it I... It is a spinoff of the show, sorry. Yeah. What I understand 
with they had be like this is a small budget for you know what they wanted to do so literally mm -hmm. they had to be like Miyazaki had to cut scenes but they don't yes. know what scenes he had to cut from the original script so apparently they made a phenomenal film with a very small budget yes I would agree I agree with that okay so the U S gross when it came to DVD and Blu-ray or mm -hmm. DVD. For the 2000 dub? Yeah, 2000 dub. I'm, presu okay. I'm presuming. The Media Blaster slash Manga Entertainment mm -hmm. dub? Yeah, it grossed uh, $1,422,000 in mm -hmm. change. And its collective world gross was $295,000 in change. Right. But keep in mind, this is not this is early money this is not like nowadays yeah and plus the information i have right in front of me does not indicate how much it made in its home country or japan right or any other re-release of this film mm -hmm. so that's the information i have in front of me right and like i was saying just a second ago this is a tie-in movie to an anime series these are not normally known for having Big budgets. Yeah, that makes sense. And this is, for the most part, from my experience, yeah, done a lot better than most anime movies. Yeah, that are based on or tie-ins to a series. The give you an idea, the only other one that we've done that was a tie-in was Digimon the movie. Yeah, which technically was three movies edited into one. Yeah, with a terrible front end. Yes, but th that's beside tie -in. that's beside the point. Yeah, go back and watch that if you want to know. But uh, go listen you, to that. Actually. Yeah, but you can tell even with that, the animation while it was a little better than the show, it's not as big as movies were even in Japan at that time. Right, for an anime movie. But yeah, this came out, I believe, after the second Loop in the Third series. Just okay. So we're up on when this took place. Which uh, there have been there were two series, like I said before this. There's been a total of seven movies total. Okay, I believe. And then uh, there have been two other series that have been produced recently. Okay. Excellent. So, let's get into our likes and dislikes. All right. Since this was my movie, you go ahead and tell us what your first like was. Oh, first like. Well, now mind you, on the day of this recording... Uh, you just watched it. I just watched this film. I had no time for prep or whatsoever. So... Pardon the roughness of this, you know, this section mm -hmm. of mine. Uh, my first like would definitely be the character of Lupin. Yes. The the, the way he's the gentleman thief. The mm -hmm. uh, What I understand that a lot of fans were kind of disappointed with this, that it, he, they, it's, it was a different characterization of Lupin. My understanding is he is very different than what was in the show. Yeah. And I have no idea why that decision would have been made but yeah. you know thieves have high points and they have low points yeah. so maybe well, that's why he's in a junkie fiat <laughs> he's just <laughs> a, he was just at a low point before this yeah but just why he was trying to steal from monaco <laughs> yeah <laughs> but the idea of how ingenious he is when it comes to like mm -hmm. everything he does it'd be like it's the fact that he can spot this what is it goat money yeah yeah, goat money. That's what, he, that's what he calls the the goat bills. Goat bills. That's, that's what he calls these counterfeits. Yeah. And apparently these counterfeits are so good that most people can't tell they're counterfeits. Yeah. So the only reason he knows is apparently because he's studied it enough. He's studied enough and he broke into the place once. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, I, I found that so... Inc I mean, like, it sounded so clever. It's like everything he does, it, it's not to be like he's the, the goofy thief that has, you know, done a little bit of research. But no, mm -hmm. the guy has scoped out everything he's figured out the ins and outs of everything mm -hmm. basically you know like you know james bond meets sherlock holmes with a little bit of uh of the pink panther guy um inspector clouseau mix yeah in. inspector, mm -hmm. a little bit not a lot yeah a little bit but it's just he's the character that knows he's ahead of you two steps and he's the the quote-unquote, the villain. Yes, but he's not the villain because he's a, what's known as a phantom thief. Yeah. Generally, it's which is an archetype that is generally the thief mm -hmm. who 
he's the thief with a heart of gold, essentially. Yeah. He's trying to stop the worse thieves than he is. Yeah. Which is why he's poor, apparently, in this movie. Hmm. But. Yeah. I, I think that, that would be definitely my number one, mm-hmm. is how incredible Lupin is. Or Lupin yeah. the Third is. What's your number one? My number one is the relationship between Lupin and Zenigata. Oh, okay. Essentially our main detective and uh, our, thief. Our, our head thief. Because you can tell they they go head to head. They, they're obviously rivals. One's trying to catch the other. Yeah. But when they do finally meet up about halfway through the movie in mm-hmm. the catacombs, essentially. Yeah. And they realize where they're at and what's going on. They... You can tell they've got a relationship. They know both. They know each other mm-hmm. enough to work with each other and know what each are capable of and yes. know when to work with them and when to chase them. If you catch <laughs> yes. my meaning. Yes. Um, you can... Zenigata is a, is a weird addition to this movie. Let me point this out. Because you have to remember, he is a Japanese policeman. Yeah. Apparently working for Interpol. Who drove his... Police car from Sai- from the Saitama district in Japan because you can see that in the, if you're when you're watching with the the titles on where yeah. it translates the words on there yeah it says Saitama Police Department <laughs> the guy is dedicated so, and he apparently drove that police car all the way across to, to Europe where this movie's taking place in this fictional country wow <laughs> along with apparently members of the Japanese police force or the the special defense yeah special yeah. defense force they're in trucks not comfortable trucks not buses military trucks they had to get them over there somehow <laughs> so i don't know if they drove over there or if they took a boat but the fact that zenigata has to catch lupin but knows the minutes that lupin's actually not the real bad guy in this yeah. situation he works with him and you know Lupin gets ex- gives him a decent excuse to find the counterfeit bills he technically oh, is not gosh. allowed to get a hold oh, of. Gosh, that scene. And I love that scene where it's like, can we do anything to stop? It's like, no, it's a live feed. Gee, what are we going to do with all these counterfeit dollar bills? Look at all this press. I can't believe. I wish. Man, he's a bad actor. <laughs> yes. Yeah, to, to go back to your point. Um, the the point where Lupin and the detective they've come to a truce, come to a truce, and be like it's like yeah if we can help each other we can solve this mm-hmm. and uh, Lupin is like shake on it and he goes eh, that's pushing it too much that's that's a little too far that's a little too far that was great <laughs> I was like okay I'm laughing my butt off on that one yeah. that was great <laughs> and also the scene where Lupin has pretended to be Zenigata oh that was hysterical follows them. <laughs> That they all go away. He's was I just here? That was that was Lupin. Yeah, go go get him. Quick, he's gonna he's gonna steal everything. And the guys are, and Lupin just walks right in. <laughs> okay, we're going in there. And then Zenigata realizes what happens, follows him up, but gets caught by the door. Oh god! And drops. <laughs> and that <laughs> and that picture that the thing took, so they could see who fell in, was just hilarious. It's oh, like, absolutely. Okay, you knew how to time it for even when someone runs in the air. Oh, gosh, yes. <laughs> oh, so my second would be, and you might have helped me with some of the names. It's fine. Uh, it would be... I'm going to go with the easy names because I don't know most of the the, the Japanese. complicated parts of it. Okay. The parts that the English kept repeating. <laughs> yeah. The, uh, the relationship between Lupin, the princess who her name is... Uh, Clarice. Clarice. Clarice and... Not the one from Silence of the Lambs. Yeah, not, not Clarice. That's the name that keeps coming to mind. <laughs> you know, about, Father Bean's whole some, jazz. Yeah, something about Father Bean's. <laughs> With a nice key and day. <laughs> anyway. Anyways, that would be like that relationship. And who is the... I'm, I'm drawing a blank on her name. Uh, the... The other... The, the other... The, the, the Her... The, the girl that was up there watching her that was obviously yes. there for other reasons. Yes. That was Fujiko. Fujiko, thank you. That that whole relation dynamic is mm-hmm. so interesting. Where it's 
Lupin had met Clarice at one point when he was younger and when yes. she was younger. That's the reason he knew the dog's name. Mm-hmm. And uh, their, their whole relationship is where, like, how... But you can definitely tell that she has fallen in love with him and vice versa. Yes. And so the that dynamic of how... And then Fuchiko going in there messing everything up like he's all... It's like, yeah, he's a really great guy. I'd be like, yeah, we were, we, we've, we've been, well, we've been partners. We've been this, we've been this. And it's like, oh, really? Huh? Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, the, the scene in which they, you know, uncovered the plot, the bad guy's dead, which is absolutely hysterical how this guy yes. dies. Uh, uh, so when be like, everything's said and done, it's like, hey, be like, like she's uh, Clarice would be like, oh, I, I want to go away with you. Be like, I'll be like, I know I'm not a thief now, but I can, I can be. And she's like, like really hey, wants to be with Lupin. You don't need to fall into the darkness. <laughs> yeah, don't need to fall into the darkness. But you've got just, a people to lead. Yeah, just all thirty five hundred of them. Yeah, which is smaller than the town we're currently in. <laughs> yes. So the 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 moment where you see. Lupin be like he is like he's doing this number and he's mm-hmm. like, got his hands and hands are all wide out and he's yeah he's trying not to hold her because mm-hmm. he knows he wants to he knows he, yeah he wants her to come with him but he's got that he's that gentleman thief so he, yes he he realizes she is that responsibility and he lets her go mm-hmm. even though he really wants to be with her yes and I, I found that really touching I was like mm-hmm. wow. Oh my gosh, that was, I was like, just the animation in yeah. that, just not, not saying because oh, it was 1970 years old, be like, it's just really good animation. Yeah. Incredibly. And by the way, this is our oldest movie right now that we're at the reviewing moment. at the moment. <sighs> so yeah, that would be mine. The very interesting dynamic between these two characters. What's yours? My second one is the aqueduct scene. Oh, yes. <laughs> that is a amazing bit of footage from the moments they get into the aqueduct to when uh, Lupin uh, gets out of it. Because mm-hmm. <laughs> it starts off. Yes. They're, they say, you know, no one would, they're trying to find a way into this castle. Mm-hmm. Every entrance is monitored. There's no way in. Yeah. Except this old Roman aqueduct, yeah. which would be, you'd have to be crazy to try that way. Yeah. So of course that's the way he goes. Yeah. It's Lupin. It's Lupin. <laughs> so there, he's st- he and Jigen yeah. are swimming through this aqueduct, obviously swimming with the current. Right. And at one point, you can tell the current is going a little faster than they expected it to, mm-hmm. and without you even realizing it, Lupin goes over the edge. <laughs> And is then swimming <laughs> upstream, trying to go up. And it's like, okay, A, that's not possible. Are you like, B, I don't logic. care. Yeah. It's C, that is logic. hilarious. Because <laughs> it goes on for five or three minutes at least of him trying to swim as slowly he just starts falling back down. It's like, well, 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 the thing you like, go. He, like he, he gets very close to Jigen, right? Yeah, he gets close to Jigen. And be like, and he's and, like, he's nearly there. He's struggling and, really hard. And then, and then he like starts falling, falling back. back down. It's like, oh, there he goes. <laughs> and then he, he goes through all the, the, the gears and yes. everything. Like, ow, ow, that hurts. Ow, that physically hurts. Ow. And it's then like, how just, is he alive? And then just, <laughs> just to throw... Bring Zenigata back up to this. Yeah. Zenigata, who realizes, what's that windmill for? It's like, oh, that brings up water from the aqueduct. And there's no way up it? No. Okay, I'm going to go check on that, because I bet... Where's that let out? It's like, oh, the fountain in the armory, which is an odd place for a fountain. <laughs> especially one that looks like this. Yeah. Just getting that out there. Yeah, big line So head. he gets in there. Of course, the fountain is a water... Is a line head that's obviously spewing out water to go throughout the whole castle mm-hmm. and Lupin is just been ready to come out and he sees any guys come in so he climbs back into the lion's <laughs> mouth it's like okay can't come out yet and Zenigata looks into the lion's mouth thinking I know he's here he's, I know he's like <laughs> you just know it's like is he gonna get caught or is he not gonna get caught and then of course he doesn't get caught and that's when he gets out and turn as he gets out of his wet so you can see he's wearing <laughs> an exact replica of Zenigata's <laughs> trench coat, uh, trench coat, and, everything. <laughs> and it's then they go up to the other scene I talked about earlier with the uh, where he pretends to, where anyway, yeah, fantastic. That whole scene. sequence is like, yes. oh my word, 
this is great. <laughs> and the uh, animation in this is phenomenal with the is. water. It's for seventy not for nineteen seventy nine. The animation on this water is odd to be really liking water, but water is mm-hmm. a hard thing to animate, whether it's two D or three D. Yeah, and it just works here. No, it, there is some degree where like when the water's going over the edge in the aqueduct, mm-hmm. where it's like, okay, yeah, you just drew a rectangle that's kind of going down, and I'm not sure it would look like that in reality. Yeah. But it fits in with the art style of everything else, so we'll just let that slide. Yeah. But the rest, of the, the rest of the animation you see on the water with the lake, the aqueduct, and, of course, the end when the dam breaks, mm-hmm. all of that is spot on for me. Anyway, what's your third like? My third like would be our our actual villain, our villain of the villain of the movie, the Duke, the Count, Count, Count Cagliostro, Count Ca- Cagliostro. I don't want to call him a Count, a Duke, but I don't anyways. know. But it is a Count, and technically there was a Count Cagliostro, I mm-hmm. believe, in Germany or Austria, somewhere in there. But yeah, this is not based on other than they took his name. Okay, yeah. Okay. And he was not That's actu- where and he was him. not actually a count. Yeah. <laughs> he just called himself <laughs> that and people were not going to fight him over it. Yeah. So, I mean, like this is a good villain. Mm-hmm. This is a very good villain. The, the, the fact that his, his entire backstory this is literally be like I'm trying to find this hidden treasure and you honestly think be like going through it's like it's you know pounds and pounds of gold and silver yes. and ju- precious jewels and it turns out to be a hidden city. <laughs> yeah. A hidden Roman city that was flooded for some reason. reason? It's not, I guess the reason they, that we are not told is because it's not important. Yeah. It's just that supposedly the Romans decided to flood it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> they haven't discovered that in... Apparently 2000. the water is not very clear yeah. in this lake. Otherwise you'd have seen that. Those dirty Romans. Well, after you visited the vomitorium... <laughs> Oh, gosh. Which is not what the vomitorium was no. used for. That was literally, here's where you leave the theater. But there's a reason people think it means the other thing. Yeah. So, his... This guy is just evil. Beyond belief that, like, one, he he's forcibly mar- trying to marry marry um, uh, Clarice. Clarice. He's forced to... To the to- point where he drugs her. <laughs> And, and, her in and a tower. changes the ceremony to such a case like, if you or nobody else says anything, it will be taken as consent. Wow. Oh. <laughs> what kind of messed up wedding ceremony is this where the bride doesn't get to speak if she's happy about it? Wow. Yeah. Just the, like, one, he's been running this counterfeit, you know, racketeer for years. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, that's there again with Lupin be like, you know, gets breaks into the the uh, the casino, gets all this money, and it's like, he realized, oh, this is fake money. And I'll yeah. bring that up to one of my dislikes. Uh, but just how villainous he is. Be like, mm-hmm. you you go down to the catacombs, and you literally, you know, Lupin, Lupin is go, zipping down. One of the things I love about it. He's, yeah. like, he's got all these gadgets. But you're zipping down, be like, see all these people that are hanged? Be like, you see... Men, women, children, mm. like everybody. All He's, these people that were his enemies that he just threw down here and left to rot. Yeah. I was just like, oh my, it's like, wow, this guy is ruthless. Mm-hmm. And, uh, be like, it's, he's got the, you know, the, he's got the, you know, the pencil mustache of being like, you know, he's the, 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 the kind of the typical villain, but he's a lot more twisted. <laughs> yeah. And, uh. Well, when. All your goons are dressed up as ninjas in the first part, and then at the wearing wedding ceremony, get into their quote unquote dress uniforms, which look like KKK hoods, but black. black. It's yeah, like, you're going for the villain angle pretty heavy <laughs> here. Yes, <laughs> pretty much. I, I just I, I felt terrible for Clarissa. I was like, yeah, like she she's literally the damsel in the distress who can't do a darn thing. <laughs> she has not. She can't. She can't do anything. Yeah. She was in a convent for four years. years. So it's like, they don't teach any self-defense in the yeah. convent, apparently? Well, appar- well, like she tried to break out the window, but apparently it's like really tough glass and steel. <laughs> it was all, that's the thing. The whole thing was reinforced. That uh, The Count really thought that far through, except for the one little opening at the very top where yeah. 
Lupin can jump in and out anytime he needs. Yeah, to. that 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 was that was clever. That was very very clever. Yeah, so I guess it would be that our um, our count, our duke, the count, the count, our count was just like how villainous he is. It's just like, oh my gosh, and it's like that that just made me cringe. It's like, gee, man, mm. like I, I'm so glad he got squished. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, what is your number three? My third like on this movie, my third like is that opening scene. Yes, and. The closing scene. I'm kind yeah. of cheating. Okay. But bear with me. Okay. The opening scene is good because it does it, it, everything with how he escapes mm-hmm. from how they escape from, oh, good from the police where they uh-huh. cut up every all, all the cars oh. fall apart as they get going good. Hysterical. And that last the last car opens up and the hood pops open and that note from Lupin is there says uh, see you, see you next time with the little monkey symbol. <laughs> that that's kind of like half of number three. It's like yeah. it's fun. It's great. It's like it gives you a perfect idea as to who we're dealing with yes. as our protagonist. But then you see the full fruition mm-hmm. of his plan at the end of it, mm-hmm. where he's pretended to be. Well, first of all, he knows she's drugged. Yeah, he knows she's going to be drugged. So what does he do to sober her up as fast as possible? Shows himself getting killed. Yeah, that would definitely... By be- having... Because he knew that guy was going to stab him through the thing. So he's got a scarecrow dressed as him. Oh, that was... Oh, that was genius. Yes. And he, and he was, so that as he's- soon as she realizes her thief's dead, she instantly sobers up from whatever drug she's on uh-huh. that she's been given. And who is Lupin? Really? And she screams... <laughs> And, and of course, he's over there in the archbishop's clothes. Oh, that was a says, hysterical! When, when don't I first you know that you, don't you know that your thief would never die this easily? <laughs> like, huh? And then, <laughs> and then it gets good. Oh yes, then it gets good because <laughs> my favorite part is uh, Fujiko pretending to be the news anchor. Oh, good night. And her commentary <laughs> on the whole thing. <laughs> my favorite part is she's my favorite part. She's like, ah, oh look. Uh, our son Lupin has escaped down into the down into the thing when we just saw him go this other way, but apparently nobody saw that. So they all chase down there. And says, "Oh, I wonder what's down there." So she p- picks up this camera, ready to go, <laughs> as if like you would have this in a wedding ceremony, yeah, yes. and just follows them down there. So they get to the whole port. Like, gee, where did all this money? Co-? Darn it, I lost Lupin. Oh, what's all these printing presses doing down here with all this music? With all this fake money. This is a counterfeit operation. We have to shut this down. Man, he's a bad actor. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh, oh gosh. But then the whole thing where they're going and they're climbing up the the clock tower. Yes. Which, of course, having recently watched uh, Great, Mouse Great Mouse Detective, my thought went there. Which, by the way, it's actually the other way around. Great Mouse Detective uh, was inspired by... That scene was inspired by this scene. Oh, okay. So that's cool. And they get up there, and they even show a guy get crushed by the gears. It's like, wow, that was dark. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and they have this great fight up in the gear section, which is honestly, despite the fact the animation is doesn't have the CG that Great Mouse Detective does, it's right. actually, I think, a much better fight scene. Yeah. All that happens, and it comes right down to, here's, you know, to where the villain is hoisted by his own petard, as they say. <laughs> His own greed is what kills him. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Squish! <laughs> but that will actually lead into one of my dislikes. Okay, so, I gotcha. Uh, why don't we head to dislikes now? What is your first dislike? Okay, the first dislike, it follows up that's the, the very first scene that Lupin and our other guy, what's his name? The His accomplice? Jigen? Yeah, Jigen. Are, in the way, be like, car full of money he realizes it's fake and the average joe like most anybody would realize oh this is fake money and they throw it out the window yeah, it's fake money that's good enough to spend yeah so they just throw it out it's like you know you could have bought a new car with this money yeah done something, <laughs> At least. With, it, something with it it's like because people would have accepted it it's only counterfeit to the people who know it's counterfeit it. 
They're the only people who are going to call you on it other than you mysteriously walked up with $5,000 in, in bills, which is odd no matter what time you are. But yeah. Yeah, anyway. Yeah, that, that was one of my bigger gripes. Is like, it's like, you're a thief. Be like, why, why would it matter if it's fake bills? They're still going to be able to spend it. Yeah. That was, that was my only... That was my gripe about that first scene. It's like, really? You throw it out and it's like, well, we won't be able to retire today. It's like, you could have retired then. Yes. But, of course... No one would have known. No one would have known. No one would have cared. But that also be like kind but of... I have it, a f- it, it did lead into what was in the story. Well, I have a feeling that while Lupin had obviously tried to break... We know he tried to break into Cagliostro before to yes. find these. Yes. So he knew about the goat bills from that. Yes. He did not know he was going to run into Clarice, obviously, yes. but yeah. and and the whole thing become personal. But he could just tell, no, because that's what inspired him to go there in the first place. Mm-hmm. So you'd think he would know well enough that these were good enough fakes to spend. Yeah. But eh, what are you going to do? Yeah, not sure. All right. So what so, is your number one? Well, coming off of the ending with the all that stuff, I stopped right where. I don't like it. Where okay. it's kind of weird. Because it brings to mind how odd this entire way that the city, the Roman city is revealed. Yeah, that was a bit odd. Yeah. So in order, let, let me go over everything we see. In order for them to get, for any of this to happen, somebody has to take both a, the silver ring and the gold ring. Yeah. The ring of light and the ring of darkness. Mm-hmm. Climb up this huge clock tower. When you get up to the face, you then have to climb a little bit more to this one walkway where it's just high enough where you can just barely fit these rings into this goat's eyes. Yeah. Two problems I have with this initially. Okay. A, nobody saw this on the clock face up until now because you can see it plainly in every shot. Yeah, you this wa- This little ladder and this thing over there, it's like, you know, there's artist. There's there's thinking this is an artistic choice, and then there's stupidity. Yeah. Then, what this does when you stick it in there is it causes the hour and minute hand to come together to the twelve, and that to, and that causes the and when that happens, the whole thing falls apart. So whoever puts it in there is gonna die. Yeah. And whoever's stupid enough to be in the building when this happens is also gonna die. die. Okay. Third problem. All this does is blow up the dam. Yeah. And flood the rest of the country, essentially, because how small the country is. Yeah. Not that they, when the dam would have been built, this would have been a problem. So, why? The Romans, for some reason, wanted to hide the city under the water. Yeah. We don't know why. Yeah. But why would you build a dam to hide the city... And then put a clock tower in front of it that I'm fairly certain is a lot newer than the fall of the Roman Empire. A lot newer. A lot newer. (laughs) Which is a logistical problem I have. Yes. Like, even in the movie, there was somebody like, yeah, this is old and this is like old as the Romans. So it's like, how is the clock tower as old as the Romans? Because this is all clockwork that causes all this to happen. The clockwork is too old, is too new for the Romans to have used it. To cause the, the only that's thing it, I can think 18th of, eighteenth century technology. The only thing I can think of is the dam had been there, built there for some other reason. Yeah, not to build this lake, but this big concrete wall was there for some reason. Yeah, I'm assuming in reality to protect that city. Yeah, in the mountains, someone built the clock tower in front of it at a later date to hide the city because. That city must have been worth something to somebody, and they wanted to hide it. Mm. And that's why they had did all this really random stuff. But it had to have been sometime in the Renaissance period when this happened. Yeah, because well, I guess it could have happened in the Middle Ages sometime. But I don't know because I don't know when clockwork was invented. Clockwork was probably invented, I believe, in the 18th century. 18. Okay, so yeah, that's. It, the then early somebody, the then some people would know this Roman city was back up in here. If for they, that before that point, yeah, it, it's it just makes zero sense. Yeah, because they because this uh, sm- uh this uh, counterfeiting ring is, sh- assume- is is pretty much implied 
to have been going on since the 1600s. It's, yeah. So, <laughs> it's just a logistical problem that yes. when you're watching the movie, you don't think about it. It's yeah. when you start thinking about it afterwards, you realize, wait a minute, this doesn't work. Yeah. Why is this the treasure? Yeah. It, what it tells me is that the city itself is not the treasure. Yeah. There had to have been something in that city that yeah. the lake was actually hiding. Yeah. That we just didn't get to see. Yeah. Because Miyazaki probably didn't think of it. Or it could have been be like it's something they had to cut. Probably. You never know. Because be like, like, yeah, like you said earlier, he had to cut a lot of scenes by the end of mm-hmm. it. And really, once your main villain is dead, the problem, the real problem is solved. Yeah. It's time to end the movie. Yeah. Because that, that would have dragged on for another, you know, couple 10, of minutes. 20 minutes at least. Yeah. That whole, you know, discovery. Like, oh, these great treasures. Yeah. Oh, the treasure is the city. It's like, okay. Okay. That's kind of odd. Unless the city is made out of gold or silver or... I'm thinking at least this is stone-ish. If it, unless it's made out of ivory. Yeah. It's not going to be worth that much other for historical, which means, what, at best you're actually going to have... Uh, Tourists come, which, boy, those were accepted wildly. Tourists coming into that country at the oh, beginning of that yeah. movie. That went over. That was going over real well. Yeah. Well, was, they were just was, going to the ruins that had just recently burned down within the past, what, 15 years? years? Uh, seven years. Seven years? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now, kind of a side note, the, the way that Lupin and the other dude gets in. Jigen. Jigen gets in his hysterical. Yeah. It's like, Dad, it's like. Like, well, I'm not your dad. They're like, well, I look at you as a father figure. Well, I will say this: that scene, that those lines, yeah, were expressly made for the 2000 dub, at least, yeah, or at least the English dub, because the Japanese does not have any lines there. Oh, okay. It's it's just here's what happens, and we're going to move on. So the first song you actually hear is uh, the country of Cagliostro, 3,500 people, smallest country in the United Nations. That's where. That starts back up oh, okay. after the opening sequence. Interesting. So that whole part with them getting there, that was solely created for by the dub. Okay. Gotcha. I know, You want to know why I know this? Why? Not because I watched the Japanese, but because I tried. I was trying to catch the, num- the population number. Mm-hmm. So I was trying to turn the subtitles on. Mm-hmm. And I was trying to do it before that point so I could move into it. So I was like, why aren't the subtitles coming on? And finally it gets to that point. I was like, Oh, there must not be any text here. Oh, yeah, there's no mouths moving in this previous scene, mm-hmm. so that must be it. Okay. Well, my second would be there is there are a few scenes. There are a few scenes in this movie that there again you see no lip movement whatsoever, mm-hmm. but there's people talking. <laughs> and obviously, obviously, this is a a, a dub issue, a dub yes. issue with it. Because they're they're putting words in characters who are not talking, mm-hmm. and uh, kind of a in most cases though when this happens they are far enough in the background yeah. that you wouldn't lips move anyway yeah but there's a couple instances where it's obvious they're talking in the sound they turn around it's obvious their lips haven't moved for at least the last couple seconds yeah and also you know that same that uh that same breath of uh, dialogue and just you know animation wise. The the scene in which uh, Lupin and Jigen cross over the border into Cagliostro, mm-hmm. there is a scene where because they come in, they come into the scene in their their disguises, and there's one scene where it's a far enough, sh- it's a shot, it's a far enough shot where they're driving and they're back, they're back in their you know normal attire. Yeah, but then it switches back and they're still in their costumes, mm-hmm. and I was like. Okay, that's it's, just a that would be just a minor animation error that you yeah. can see happening, right? Yeah, I, I, especially I, I, during this time period. Yeah, I, I can I, I can understand it. It was just like, huh? It might have even been a reuse of a shot from later in the film when they're in the, in that car that and they positive. just moved it to the beginning to make everything work, and they just didn't have time to fix the, the layers of the characters. Yeah, that's just an assumption. I don't really know. Hmm. Yeah, so that was my number two. What was your number three? In that same vein, there's a couple shots in this movie where the characters are moving, but they're not animated. First, my first example of this is the first shot of the movie where Jigen and 
Lupin are lowering the money just as oh, the thing yeah. comes on. They're not moving. It's literally just the picture on this layer is moving in front of the salt, the picture. Yeah, that cell is moving it. in front of this cell. Yeah, that's, that's literally all it is. And maybe it's just because we're used to it nowadays that this stands out more. Mm-hmm. Maybe it's because we're looking at a cleaned up version for the Blu-ray mm-hmm. that you may not have noticed this is obvious in the film version mm-hmm. or in the, uh, you know, when it was on television. Mm-hmm. But you can just tell it's two separate layers, kind of. Mm-hmm. And this happens about two other times in the movie. Yeah. One of those times, at least makes sense, it's those robots in the tower oh, that don't yeah. really move. They need to have much animation, but you yeah, can they tell just, they're just yeah. moving. Yeah. yeah. And then the third is the last shot. Okay. The There is at least some animation in this, but it's very generic loop animation yeah. on Lupin and Jigen in the Fiat and Zenigata and his Japanese police force is chasing him. Oh, yeah. And you can tell they aren't even on... They, they are literally just moving back and forth to the left and right on the screen with not anything... Not trying to line up with any road that's underneath them. Yeah. No, and yeah. there is at least some loop... They, the animation is at least looping in these scenes, yeah. but it's just the ending. And it's the fact that... in the fact that our opening shot, you know, what should be our... Yeah. Best foot forward in the movie mm-hmm. is this, and then the final shot that's supposed to leave us on a good note is like this. Yeah. S- sticks in my craw. <laughs> like, yeah. no tomorrow. I understand. And it, what it comes down to is these are two unimportant scenes in the grand scheme of the whole movie. Yeah. So they're the ones that got the less money thrown at them. Mm-hmm. I understand this. It's just, it's the first and last shot. They are important scenes, even if they're not important scenes. Mm-hmm. Plus the opening animation up until you get to the cars yeah. is very poor. Yeah. Especially with the lights coming on. It's very TV-esque, not yeah. movie-esque. Yeah. If it was the TV show, I wouldn't care as much. Yeah. But this is obviously on a movie and this lights just, it just bugs me. It's a minor thing and yeah. it's not even really worth complaining about too much, but... You know, when you go to see a movie, you expect it to be movie quality. Yeah. And the rest of this movie does it so well that this stuff just sticks out. Yeah. I agree. My number three... Now, there again, help me with the name. The uh, the uh, the sword wielder. What's his name? Goem- Goemon. Goemon. He's, He's not, not a Digimon. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. you. You stole my thunder on that yes. one. Thank you very much. But it is Goemon. Goemon. He is based actually on an ancient... Uh, the myth of a samurai who, kind of like Robin Hood, was standing up for the poor and yeah. the downtrodden against an evil shogun or yeah. samurai or whatever, and for his troubles was boiled alive. Oh, fun. Yeah. To the point where a hot bath in a barrel is actually called a goemon, goemon bath. Okay. In Japan. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Ouch. And this is supposedly his... However many relations it makes takes to make thirteen is descendant. Oh, okay. So, so for, the, for a little bit of trivia there. Okay. Okay. So yeah, I go. To I have a feeling you're about to steal my number three, but go ahead. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, going on now, mind you, with um, Loop on the Third, I have very little information mm-hmm. or very viewing, like you said earlier, yes. of you know the series. So, be like, I recognize who Goemon was. It's like, oh, he's a swordsman. Yeah. But he's completely unutilized in this movie. Like, completely yeah, underutilized. I, I completely agree. And this is actually my number three. Yeah. And you, you can just tell the entire reason he's there is they had brought the rest of the cast uh-huh. from the show on. So, you might as well round it out and bring the last guy you haven't written a scene for yet. And yeah. give... Really, two good scenes. Yeah, where he actually gets to do something cool. But for the most part, the rest of it, he's just standing, standing there. He's there. He's present, but he doesn't do anything. He, he, he's a background character. It says one or two things. Yes, he's like you said. He has two very good scenes in the movie, but he's completely underutilized. And yeah. it's, it's it's a really sad, a really tragic when you have a character that's that cool and it's like, oh. I had the sword be like is completely unbeatable. You yeah. you you have no way to win. And it's like and the, why didn't we bring this up earlier? And his, the only times he uses it, the first time is to cut off 
Lupin the Third's burning suit as he's falling from the gyrocopter. Yes. Mm-hmm. What Which is admittedly cool to see. You know, he's falling. He does the little... Because you know, he doesn't actually do the whole animation. He's just... Yeah. Pull the sword out, put it back in just a little bit. Mm-hmm. You hear the, the Japanese dong dong thing. Uh-huh. And then Lupin's clothes just separate <laughs> and he just falls into the car. Which is like, okay, that's cool, but it's kind of lame, which Goemon agrees with us. <laughs> yes. this, this is not worthy of my <laughs> sword. It's like, you know you're in for a bad time, yeah. Goemon, don't you? <laughs> yeah. And then the third time where it's like, he's actually doing some decent defense. Yeah. With in the fight in the in the church, yeah, and you know the the guy's dead. It's like I don't f- fight unarmed men or whatever yeah. it is. It's like okay, that's cool and all, but you didn't do anything in the whole movie. Yeah, anything worth it's interesting and cool. You're literally here because you're in the rest of the show, and the rest of the cast got to come along, so they brought you along for fun. Yeah. To the point where you're not, you're at the, your voice actor in the 2000 dub isn't even given a credit in the movie. Man, oh man, oh man. But yeah, yeah, poor Goemon. <laughs> poor Goemon. Poor Goemon. He, yeah. He's cool and he didn't get to do anything. Yeah. So I think that rounds out our, I our think uh, that likes does. and dislikes. Um, what, is, what, what are you going to rate it? Oh, I'll probably rate this an 8. I would agree, actually, with you on that. Yeah, it's, it's a fun movie. Yeah, it's. I, I'm. I'm not. I'm not gonna sit here and say, oh, it's got some deeper meaning, like we might run into with some of these other ones coming yeah. up in Miyazaki month. But this is just a pure fun popcorn flick. Yeah, that is just fun to watch, and it's got a decent story, and mm-hmm. there's a lot of nice connections in it. It's not meant to be more than that. Yeah. And it excels at that. And yeah. To me, that's a sign of a successful movie when it does what it's set out to do. Yes. Yeah, I, I completely agree with your sentiment. I don't exactly. care what Scorsese and the other guy claim when they say, or Francis Ford Coppola say when they say Marvel isn't cinema. They set out, those movies set out to do what they were meant to do. That's all yeah, it is. Exactly. Just to get that off my chest because I've been watching this for the past <laughs> couple weeks and it pisses me off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just. Hush. Yeah, it's 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 a phenomenal film that is very enjoyable. Like you said, it's kind of like a pop. It's a popcorn film that just has a lot of enjoyment. And it's one of those films to be like if they ever brought it to theaters again, mm-hmm. I would definitely watch it. Well, un- even though they do 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 do, even though they Fathom Events does do these uh, Studio Ghibli stuff yes. on regular rotation. Mm-hmm. This is all done through G Kids, yeah. that company, mm. and they're not the ones who actually own the rights to this movie. Yeah, the American North American rights to it is right. owned by Discotech Media mm-hmm. at the moment. Uh, so, yeah, that one's not going unless Discotech makes some kind of deal, which I'm assuming this is very expensive for them to pull off for Probably. that sort of thing. I just don't see it happening, unfortunately. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah so. it would be fun to see that in a the theater. Oh yeah, but yeah, just the. Uh... It's it's a great film. It's definitely worth watching. Like we said in our our, uh, our uh, non spoiler review, uh, it's definitely worth watching. Um, definitely, if you have kids, definitely get put the family friendly version on. Just to you know, mark get the cuss words out of there because honestly, the cuss words don't even add anything to the story. Yeah, but I don't know. There's I don't think the edit as I listened to a little bit of the family friendly dub where I knew yeah. some of the language was rough mm-hmm. in the in regular one. The editing in those sections for the audio just seems kind of weird. Yeah. If that makes any sense. Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah, so, yeah, it's definitely friendly, friendly. Uh, I'm definitely giving it an 8. Mm-hmm. And uh, I believe you agree with my sentiment? Yes. Okay. I agree. All right. So that brings us to the end of another episode. Uh, like we said earlier, we are in the middle of... We just, we just started a Miyazaki and Ghibli Month. Mm-hmm. Our next movie is the second is Miyazaki's second movie. Okay, it is current. the The uh, movie is now owned by Studio Ghibli, but it was not made technically by Studio Ghibli. Really, but it's made by the same people in Studio Ghibli. It's literally pre Ghibli. Oh, okay, it's the same company, but before they became Studio Ghibli. Oh, okay. And that movie is Nausicaa and the Valley of of the Valley of the Wind. Oh, okay. This is the first time where we definitely get to see his one of his strong female characters actually get to shine. 
Because unfortunately, Clarice doesn't get much time to shine no. in this movie. Because she's not the hero. Yeah. But one of the things Miyazaki movies are known for is having a strong female leads. Okay. And we'll see that in this partic- in this movie coming up. Okay, excellent. So, it's named after her, for crying out loud. Okay, so, yeah. So, but... after that, we're going to watch um, Castle in the Sky. Okay. Which is another fun one. Then we get to the not-so-fun one. And the first one by the other director at Studio mm-hmm. Ghibli, who's unfortunately, the name is escaping me at the moment. My apologies. But uh, he will be watching Grave of the Fireflies. Yeah. Which is our only other one, at least this month, that's not released by G-Kids. Yeah. Uh, and then we'll end November, because yeah. November does have five Saturdays, mm-hmm. with the other half of that two, that, that uh, double, well, it's not double header, what movie when they, in, a show, in a theater when they do two showings? Oh, uh, trip, not, and I'll double, get a baseball thing. Double showing? Something like that. Yeah, something like that. Something like that. Well, when the when that's the thing, when Grave of the Fireflies first aired, it was or not aired when it was first in theaters. It was double feature. Double feature. It was a double feature with the last movie that we'll be reviewing, which is my name, my neighbor Totoro, Totoro. which is one of my favorites. Okay, if we're being honest. Yeah, there. You know, there again, be like some of the be like for the majority of them, I've never seen. Yeah. So I'm I'm really forward to watching these films and you know getting to know. Why does Drew love these films so much? Or, I don't even know if I would say I love them a whole lot. It's just this is, it's like with Pixar. Okay. Even the weakest movies yeah. are still good. Yeah. They're still fun. They're still, there's still something about it. It's like, yeah, I'm going to enjoy this movie when I start it. Or, okay. There's, you know it's going to be done well. Yeah. Or why, or why uh, like, uh, Adam Savage loves these characters so much. Yeah. Because he's, he's done... Two cosplays of two of the characters mm-hmm. from these movies, and so yeah, I'm really interested because I've heard people talk about uh, Totoro so much. It's like who the heck is Totoro? <laughs> so I'll, I'll finally well, be able to realize who this bus cat is. <laughs> Totoro is not the bus cat. Okay, I thought he was. No, he's <laughs> not the, the. Sorry, not the bus cat. The cat bus. He's that's cat. the actual. Term. Oh yeah, that's right. The that's cat right. bus. Oh yeah, no, that's right. Totoro is not the cat bus. The cat bus is a separate character. Okay, excuse my ignorance because I've seen the film. You'll, you'll find out because you'll know who Totoro is. Yeah, I know he, what the character he, looks like, he, and it's like, wait, that's the wrong character. Totoro even has a cameo in Toy Story three. Oh yeah, I saw that. Which is which at the time they could get away with. <laughs> Yeah, because Disney was funding most of the most of the U.S. stuff at the time. Mm-hmm. Anyway, uh, that's going to bring us to the end. Uh, you can where can they find you, Jacob? Uh, you can find me on Facebook at Jacob B Heron, and also on Facebook at Jacob's Daily Art Corner, where I try to draw every day. I don't get to it as much anymore, but I'm. It just makes me trying to get better as an artist. Mm-hmm. And uh, you can find me on Twitter at Jacob B dot Heron. And I think that's it currently. I had to go and look more. Mm-hmm. But yeah, that's where that's where I'm at currently. So where can they find you? Uh, they can also find me on Facebook under Drew Dodgen. Uh, you should also, by the time this episode comes out, be able to see new pictures at Drew's photo bin. As I, we, the reason we've been recording a week early is because this coming. Tuesday when we would normally record, mm-hmm. which would be the last Tuesday from when you're hearing this, I will have been out of the state. Yes. On a little bit of a vacation. So and I'm of course planning to take pictures of the fall foliage. What yeah. little is turned so far, but who knows what we'll see up there. Right. And thankfully the weather looks like it's gonna be pretty nice, so I ought to be able to get some good photos that way. So if you like really if you like nature photos, go give that a look. Awesome. Um, also, also, I'd like to bring up, ever since our last episode, mm-hmm. that would have been our last Halloween, our last Halloween episode. Mm-hmm. So, to those who are listening to this episode now, happy late Halloween. Yes. Uh, you can then find, look for us, oh, actually, my last, uh, my, my Twitter account yes. is at ggeorge759. That is two Gs, G-G-E-O-R-G-E. 759 
if you see a Gorn walking through a flower path, you're in the right spot. Okay. I don't post much there, but I do have it, so. Okay, got uh, it. You can also find us on our website. Both of us on our website mm-hmm. at thecellcast.podbean.com. Yeah. There you can find a link, along with finding every episode that we've produced so far. Yeah. You'll find links to hear us on iTunes and Stitcher and Google Play, mm-hmm. along with a link to our Twitter account. Yeah. Nope, the link to the Twitter account's not there yet. The link that's there is our Facebook group. It's okay. closed to keep out thieves yeah. and other such ne'er-do-wells. Uh, so join us there and keep the conversation going there. Yeah. You can also find us on Twitter at cast underscore cell. Mm-hmm. So join us there. And I think that's about it. That's Let's, it. Um, Unless I'm forgetting something. I don't think you're forgetting anything. It's more the when you do like us, be like, oh, like yes. Yeah, like, subscribe to us uh, on your on your favorite uh, podcast directory. Like the ones mm-hmm. that are mentioned. Uh, when you do, uh, please share with a friend of yours. Fri- you know, friend or two or five or six. Twelve. Or twelve. Uh, or your just, entire Facebook group. Yeah, yeah. Just blow Facebook with up. Yeah, like, blow blow them, blow Facebook up with links to uh, one of these episodes. Yeah, your favorite episode. Yeah, your favorite episode. There we go. Yeah, that would that would that'd be very interesting when yes. you, when you when you listen to this episode. What is your favorite episode of the Cellcast right now? Of of, of our of our current episode lineup. Yes. What is your favorite episode currently? Well, so, looking at the stats, it's probably Frozen. Because Maybe. that's still our most downloaded episode. Yes, yes. Uh, but personally, what is your favorite episode that we've produced so far? Yes. Please leave that in the comments of this episode, mm-hmm. this episode on Facebook, and just you know get the conversation rolling. Yes. I will point out because I think I didn't forget this. Every time you hear us say the words "the cell cast," that's mm-hmm. of course a single L mm-hmm. cell. And I do think that actually finishes us up for this episode. So I think so. This has been Drew. This is Jacob. And we will catch you in the next frame. Bye. Time on The world is dying. The seven days of fire have left the planet a poison wasteland unfit for life. Yet another village is dead. Except in the Valley of the Wind, where the air is clean and the people are free. But an ill wind has brought death to this peaceful land. What can it be? The evil of the past has returned to poison the valley. Only Nausicaa, the warrior princess foretold by legend, can stop nature from rising up in outrage and wiping humanity from the face of the earth. Can she show this world the way of peace before all that she loves is destroyed? All this killing must stop! Or will mankind sink under the tide of hate? It's too late. There's no turning back now. Nausicaa of the Valley of the Wind, Saturday night at 7.30. The Angel of Light has come. Part of a month of Miyazaki.